the waters of the deep ocean are so clear it almost looks as if these pictures were filmed in a tank but nothing could be farther from the truth these tube worms live a mile down in the ocean where pressure is so great that a large polystyrene cup attached to the outside of the submersible was crushed down to this tiny thimble. It's a pressure that could kill a human being immediately, and only a handful of submersibles worldwide can dive that deep. To add camera equipment, and then to try and film remotely from the cramped capsule seems almost impossible. But with the help of some highly professional submarine crews, our Blue Planet teams did bring back these extraordinary from another world. Craig, you have permission to surface. The Johnson Sea Link submersible surfaces after another successful dive. Here in the Gulf of Mexico, it's used in the oil and gas industry to survey the sea floor. But on this occasion, Blue Planet cameraman Mike Degree has been filming a remarkable natural phenomenon over half a mile down on the seafloor, and he can hardly contain his excitement. The place is amazing. You're traveling across the mud. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, except the odd fish, sea cucumbers swimming around. Then you come up onto the mussels, and there's a band of mussels about eight feet wide encircling what looks everything in the world like a black hole. And you're literally floating on salt. The sub is trying to sink down in it, and it bounces off the top of it. You can't get any lower. Mike is describing a unique new community of animals first discovered in 1990, a super salty lake under the sea which has never been well documented before. It's an extremely dangerous place for the unwary. Fish will come swimming across, and they're going across the mussels and probably think, wow, this is interesting, and into the lake they go, and as soon as they hit the top of that lake, they start gaping and roll over on their side. So I got a shot of one of these fish barely making it across, and he makes it to the mussels, and he lives. But it must be full of dead animals. It's a fantastic place. One of the neat things about diving in the sub is not just going places where people have never been before, you're going places light has never been before. So we use a lot of power just for light. And these are part of our air supply. This is what helps us up, come back up after we go down. We have nine thrusters and they're individually controllable, so it gives us an incredible maneuverability. The speed of our sub underwater is maybe at the best a half a knot. But uh, going any faster would be like riding a motorcycle through a museum. There'd be no point to it. That's five and a quarter inch thick plexiglass. Two people will sit up front. And this is my commute to the office in the morning. And then all the controls and all the power systems are up here. And then if you can believe it, there's four days life support behind or underneath the seats. All this technology is made to work hard. And in good weather, there are two dives a day. The Blue Planet dives were shared with a team of geologists and biologists whose detailed maps of the sea floor made it possible to guide the submarine straight to areas of interest. Mike's task for his last dive was to film some extraordinary creatures called tube worms that live around pockets of gas seeping from the seabed a thousand meters down. We used another submersible off the Cayman Islands, where director Penny Allen was after bigger subjects. Without maps, they had to use bait and wait for their quarry. We'd been sitting for five and a half hours in total darkness, when all of a sudden there was this long, slow scraping sound along the side of the sub. I almost jumped out of my skin because there was this huge shark eye just peering back through the dome at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was 24 feet long, which is almost as long as the submersible. Turn it around. These sharks live so deep um, that they're very, very rarely seen. So to encounter this massive six gill shark at a thousand feet depth was a completely unique experience and very exciting. The tube worms Mike was after were far smaller than six gilled sharks and required a more intricate filming technique. A state-of-the-art high-definition camera was fitted to the submersible, but that wasn't the only modification needed for filming. 
they've had our two best lights, the HMIs, way up on the top next to a big xenon spotlight. And that works great for science, gives you nice flat light, a lot of information in the frame. But that's not what we're interested in. We want to get shadows and detail and darks and lights. And in order to do that, you've got to take the lights farther away from the camera. So we've moved this HMI off the top there down to this manipulator. And the camera will be aiming out this direction. This light will be aiming this direction. So we're getting nice cross lighting. And that'll give us great detail and shadows and a lot more interesting picture. Because of these modifications, a dedicated crew had to work through the night to get it ready for our early morning dive. And we just uh, put in the, the little uh, pencil cameras, little tiny cameras to get the shots of you and the pilot and hopefully out through the this front of the sphere. So now it's just tying things down so it doesn't get ripped out by the roots every time you want to shift your legs about. And it's uh, 20 minutes before 11, so it's, it's pretty early yet. Six the next morning sees the Johnson Sea Link setting off on Mike's dive to find the two worms. All the lights and the cameras are fitted and checked, and now all that Mike can do is hope that everything works out a thousand meters down. Yeah, The journey down will take 20 minutes, and the submersible has enough power for six hours' work. The crew inside have constant contact with the mothership. 176. The only sense they have that they're descending comes from quickly diminishing light. By 500 meters, most of the light from the surface has gone, and strange, tantalizing creatures start to pass by. Okay, we're sitting on the bottom. My depth is uh, 1755, 1755. Temperature is 7 degrees. 7 degrees. Visibility is maybe 30 to 35 feet. Below 500 meters, creatures like this rabbit fish exist in a world where daylight never penetrates. Filming moving animals with a submersible requires a lot of skill from the pilot, since it's very easy to disturb the ancient silt on the seabed. At least tube worms don't move around, and Mike had a few hours to concentrate on high-quality images before the submersible's batteries ran down. First, the lights attached to the manipulator arm had to be carefully positioned to get the right look. But the real challenge was the big close-ups. At high magnifications, every tiny movement is crucial. But eventually, Mike was satisfied. Wow, that's beautiful. These beautiful creatures take almost 200 years to grow to this size, and for millions of years, they have evolved in the deep sea out of the sight of mankind. Until now. So talented, illustrator Nick Sherat will be drawing some of your fave Blue Peter memories at 5.30 on CBBC. Here on BBC Two, the eggheads are full of facts, but did you know they've also got some hidden talents? That's next. In the next programme, Blue Planet follows the most powerful of all marine hunters into the open ocean.